J3D Tech here, and today I want to show you how I prepare and learn a new printer. This Sonic Mini 8KS by Frozen is new to me. I've never used it, so learning how to work with it is kind of part of this video. And also this resin, which is the version 2 of the Simple Gray by Shritech, I've also never used. It's going to be a really fun experience, and with that, let's get started. This printer does come with a protective layer for both the LCD and the FEP. Make sure you remove these before you level your printer or do anything. I've had a few people ask me, and I've seen it on social media more than a few times, should I leave one of these on for extra protection? And you absolutely do not want to do this. This thin material is not designed to protect your screen in that way. Any extra material between your LCD and the print is going to diffuse the light, decreasing the quality of your print. The further away your print is away from the LCD, the more out of focus it's going to be. The existing screen protector already does this to an extent, and those screen protectors that cover the entire top of the printer can be a little thicker and make that blurry problem a little bit worse. They offer the best protection and many can't see the difference. In the end, it's just a personal choice. This printer comes with a pre-installed screen protector, so as soon as you remove the shipping film, you're good to go. The next thing I want to talk about is why even have a screen protector in the first place. Well, the reason for that is every once in a while, you might make a mistake and push this down into the vat with a hard bit inside of it. To mitigate that, what I do is I use this really soft rubber spatula and I'll actually squeegee the FEP. I'll do this to mix up the resin before my next print, which you should always do regardless. But also doing this, if there's anything stuck to it or anything in there, I'll find it. I'll, you'll feel it with your fingers as you're squeegeeing it. Even if it's just one layer thick, you'll feel it and you'll know to do a vat clean to take it out. A lot of 3D printers ship with this thing, throw it away. Don't ever use it, it'll damage your FEP. It's not good for scraping things off, it's utter trash. So just toss it. Next, I wanna to talk to you about how I level my printers. And the most common way is the paper level method, which I don't actually use. I don't use this because one, it takes more time. You have to clean off your build plate and you have to remove your vat for every time you level. Um, you put a piece of paper on, which hopefully it's clean. If you're using the same paper over and over again, it might not be, but even a new paper is gonna leave fibers on it. While your vat's off, you might get hair or other contaminants on the, on the LCD, or even with the standoffs. If you put this aside, who knows to say what you're putting it on is clean. And they are kind of statically charged, so even some hairs or fibers, it's going to pull up into it. So unless you clean off the bottom of your uh, FEP every time before you put it back on, most likely you're introducing contaminants in between your VAT and your LCD, which you never want to do. So the method I like to use, I call the VAT level method, which is where you'd loosen up the four bolts to where this thing moves freely, put a little resin in your VAT, and actually lower this down into the VAT, which on this printer is pretty easy. Just under tools and Z calibration, and then next. Now on this printer, it will give you instructions on how to do it, but they're for the paper leveling method, and I'm just gonna do my own thing. Uh, the next thing, this is very slow, so we're just gonna speed this up. So at this point, what I'll do is I take two, a, a gloved hand, because I'd have a little bit of resin in there, and I put it right on top of the build plate. Pushing downwards, then use the Allen wrench and you'll go through about four passes and tighten them up slowly until it's all tightened up. At which point you're pretty much done. For this printer, the next stage is really easy. You just hit done. It's gonna go all the way to the top, at which point this printer is ready to go. For other printers, you're gonna have to hit Z equals zero or something about setting zero and then hitting enter and then it will raise all the way up. So at this point in the video, let's go do it live and I will see you over there. You really just want to shake this resin like it owes you money. I shook this for about 30 seconds before adding it, and I only added a little bit. I'll add the rest in a little bit later. Next, you're going to want to loosen up the four bolts and send the printer home. Like I talked about earlier, in this printer, you just start the leveling process. In other printers, you just hit a home button under settings. Now that it's all the way home, we're going to take our gloved hand and push down on the build plate. We're going to take our Allen wrench and we're going to tighten up the four bolts in a crisscross pattern about four times per bolt. The final time, I'm actually gonna turn the Allen wrench around and use the taller end. This is just to give it a little bit more torque. I'm not gonna put it in so tight I'm gonna strip these bolts. It is an aluminum block and it can strip, but I'm gonna do it tight enough to where if I'm really careful with this, I probably never have to level again, ever. After you've tightened all four bolts, you're going to hit Z equals zero on some printers, but in the case of this printer, we're just gonna hit done and the build plate's gonna go up. The next thing you have to do is prepare your print. And for this, I'm gonna use Leche Slicer. And the first thing we have to do is add the new printer. Once you have Leche Slicer open, click on add a printer in the top left-hand corner. 
From here, I'm gonna click on the green Add button. Now it's gonna ask me whether I wanna add a resin printer or filament. Right now, we're gonna do resin. Next, it's gonna give us a search field. This is the fastest way to add a printer. All you have to do is type in the manufacturer or the printer you wanna find. This gives me of all the frozen printers supported by Lychee Slicer. All I have to do now is locate the Mini 8KS and add it. Now that we've added the printer, we need to add resin. In the bottom left hand corner in green, you'll see it says add new resin. This is gonna present you with the community profile list. With this, you could actually use the drop downs at the top and then select the type of resin you're using and the printer and you can see what the community has developed. But for me, I like my own profile, so I'm gonna go through and create my own from scratch. This video is already getting a little bit long, so I'm not gonna go into detail about these settings. I'm just gonna quickly type them in. But the settings I'm using here, I found to work for pretty much all printers and all resin, given that you calibrate for the UV exposure time for burn-in and normal layers. I do have other videos where I cover these settings in detail. I also have my guide where I cover them in detail. Link in the description. Finally, don't forget to name your resin by the brand, the name, and the color. This particular resin is new, so it's not in Lychee Slicer yet. So I'm just gonna make a custom color of gray V2. These five files are designed to help you calibrate your machine with or without calipers. If you don't have calipers, you just stack the boxes inside of each other or place all the rafts next to each other and do a fingernail check. If you have digital calipers, you can measure the boxes or measure the thickness of the rafts. This will tell you if your build plate is level. It'll even tell you if you're dimensionally accurate or if you're not. Now, if resin tensile strength is more what you're after and not dimensional accuracy, you can also just keep increasing your exposure until all the pillars print, ignoring whether or not the boxes fit or not or how they measure. This will give you a resin tensile strength type calibration, which can be really useful if you're printing pre-supported models that are a little bit under-supported. You wanna make sure anti-aliasing is disabled when doing calibration prints as it can interfere. Next, click Export Slice to File. You wanna make sure you're saving it directly to your hard drive and not directly to your USB. This is because if you save it directly to your USB, you can increase the chance of failure through data corruption. I just finished my first print using this printer and this resin in just over an hour. So let's take it off and see how it went. What I'm looking for is to make sure that everything is there. It looks like I do have all four of the build plate level tests, as well as the cubes of calibration in the center. So everything went well as far as the burn-in, at least that I have enough that they stuck. We'll see now if uh, how, easy, how easy they come off and that'll tell me whether maybe I did too much exposure. After that, we can test the boxes to see if I have enough normal layer exposure if I need to decrease or increase that. So let's do that now. So the way I normally like to remove my prints is make sure to hold the print, um, the build plate, not by the handle, but by the build plate itself. This way it doesn't come out of level in case they're a little hard to get off. And remember, this is the very first print I've ever done on this printer, so hopefully they come off nice and easy. And they don't. That was by far the most difficult print I have ever had to remove from a build plate. I did try very hard not to scratch it, but as you saw, I really wasn't very successful. These little scratches are okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. In fact, that texture can actually help, especially on a build plate with no laser etching. Well, it looks like I reduced the burn-in exposure by a little bit too much, and I had a failed print. Only about half of the print stuck to the build plate, and the other half is inside this vat, stuck to the FEP. When this happens, it's okay. What you don't want to do is use the spatula and try to scrape it out of the vat. Remember, that's going to damage your FEP. Instead, what you want to do is do a vat clean. To do a vat clean, you're going to take the supports from an old print, and you're going to put them in the corner of your vat. If you don't have an old print, you can use a clean glove. You're gonna push down slightly while you run the vat clean. On this printer, the Mini 8KS, you'll find it under Tools, Vat Cleaning. Just click Start and it's gonna cure it for about 15 seconds. Once it's cured, you're gonna gently pull up on that support or the glove, and you're gonna pull up and kinda of towards the center of the vat. The sheet of cured resin with your felt prints on it is gonna come right out and voila, you're ready to go and start printing again. When I was calibrating this resin for this printer, I noticed that the build plate calibration tests were measuring a little bit too thin, which is uh, these little square things right here. They're supposed to measure one millimeter thick, but instead they were measuring at 0.6 millimeters thick. In order to fix this, I had to adjust the Z offset of the printer, which is the height of where the very first layer starts to print. 
To adjust the Z offset, you'll find that under Tools, and then click on Z Control, and the first thing you have to do is tell the printer to go to the home position. Click on Start. Once the printer is in the home position, we can now set our Z offset. For this, I need to set it by a difference of 0.4 millimeters. Click on the 0.1 millimeter, and then push up four times to increase it by 0.4 millimeters. At this point, we're done. We just need to save our settings. Do that by clicking the Z offset button and then click set. And that's it, you're done. I have yet to run across a printer that doesn't offer this function. Just refer to the manual on how to do it. Or you can search me out, Derek J3 d Tech on the Leche Slicer Discord. Link in the description. After I've calibrated all the burn-in layers, I had to calibrate the normal layers. To do that, I used my boxes of calibration print. The way this print works is you snap off the boxes and you stack them inside of each other. Once they all fit, you're dimensionally accurate. At which point you can check out all these pillars on the side. The more pillars you have, the more resin tensile strength you have while dimensionally accurate. This particular resin printed almost every single pillar, meaning it has really good tensile strength at dimensional accuracy. Now that we're finished with calibration, we're able to pick our very first creation. I decided I wanted to print this miniature by Miniatures Blueprint. I enjoyed how the simple gray version 2 worked on this print. Due to its low viscosity, it was really easy to work with and offers great details. You'll find links to my detailed guide in the video description along with links of where to download all the calibration parts used in this video. Let me know in the comments if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video on how to set up a brand new resin printer. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.